Hello, I hope you're all doing well. And this video is going to be part 4 of my processing series and it's all about power leveling. I did a lot of processing during the past few weeks and I was super curious to try out different methods for leveling. I've tried out a bunch of common methods and also some, let's say, lesser known methods. And in this video I want to report back on these methods, tell you my experience with them and how they match up. Alright, before we dive into the different methods, let's take a moment to look at the kind of setup you would want to get the most EXP. And starting off with the EXP buffs, here I've got a long list of buffs. This is from my written guide over at Videolytics. I wanna go through this and call out a few ones that I recommend you guys to run. So first of all, we got the Life Skill Staples, that's where Dura Draft and Seafood Crown Meal. Then we get the Trans Tier, that's an alchemy stone with 30% life EXP. You can get that from a season quest. And the Kafra's Journal of Nature, by the way, super handy feature on Videolytics. If you click on the database entry, you'll be guided to the Grumpy Green guide on how to get it. Then you can run the Clang Clang Lightstone set, this gives a bunch of useful stuff, including a bit of processing EXP. And then finally, if you have any pets with life EXP, so either a certain type of pets, like the cats, give life EXP, or you can get processing EXP as a skill. So just make sure that when you're processing, you have those pets out. Those are all buffs that are easy to maintain, because keep in mind that leveling processing is a total time sink, so you want to have a solid baseline of buffs that you can keep up at all times. Other buffs you may have access to are Villa, Book of Life, Old Moon Book and Cake. Now there are also the XP crystals and to be honest I'm a bit on the fence about those. On the one hand I could get an additional 70% XP, but on the other hand they are quite expensive still and I would be giving up not only my weight setup but also valuable slots in my crystal bag. So maybe a compromise could be running 4 Gervish crystals for the weight and then fill in with XP crystals. Alright, that's it for the buffs. Now in terms of gear, basically the idea is to get as much mastery as possible, because higher mastery means higher batch processing and that means higher EXP per hour. I went over the gear setups in all of the previous videos and I'm not gonna do it again, so if you want to look up some gear setups feel free to go back to any of these videos. But there's one specific piece of gear I want to talk about, that's the clothes. I get asked all the time, hey if I want EXP should I get the silver embroidered or the mastery clothes? and they give different kinds of stats, so the silver and butter clothes will give us processing EXP and success rate, whereas the mastery clothes will give flat mastery. Now both of these will increase our processing EXP just in different ways. On the silver and butter clothes we get the EXP bonus, and on the mastery clothes we get the mastery, that increases our batch processing, and that increases our EXP per hour. Now obviously the question is, which one of these is more effective EXP? And this is gonna depend on a few factors, so for example which XP buffs you're already running because of diminishing returns, then how much mastery you have, and obviously which kind of grades you're comparing, like plus 3 or plus 4 clothes, and which kinds of mastery clothes. And the cool thing is, you can math all of that out, which I've done in this sheet. So here you can enter your XP and success rate buffs, and then it's gonna do a comparison of how different kinds of clothes compare at different mastery brackets. In this table here, a green cell indicates that at this mastery bracket, the mastery clothes in that column would be more effective than whatever server and product clothes we entered. And just looking at this, it becomes pretty obvious that pretty much no matter your mastery, no matter which kind of clothes you choose, it's probably gonna be better to run mastery clothes. The only times where I would consider running these silver and butter clothes is at the higher mastery brackets where you're gonna start capping out your mastery at 2k if you run the mastery clothes. So TLDR, trust me bro, just use mastery clothes. <laughs> and if you wanna go into the details, feel free to make a copy of this sheet. Alright, and with that we can almost get started with the different methods, but before we go into that I quickly want to show you this XP calculator. This is Barry's XP calculator and it's really useful for figuring out how many hours of processing you would need to do to reach a certain level. To use the sheet you want to go to file, make a copy and then you can start entering your mastery, the recipe you're processing as well as your XP buffs, starting and go level. And then here it will tell you the number of hours required to reach that level. Now with this info all of the way we can start talking about recipes for power leveling. And if we're talking recipes then the holy grail would be what pickled vegetables is to cooking. So that's a recipe where we can buy the materials of the vendor, it's high EXP, infinitely spammable and we can even get rid of the product super easily by packing them into boxes and selling them to an NPC. 
Unfortunately, it's not quite that easy for processing. There are a few different methods and they all have their pros and cons. Some are higher EXP, some are more profitable, some are more AFK friendly, but there's no recipe that does it all. So leveling processing is really all about having different recipes at hand and then being able to choose based on your priorities in the game. For the first method, we're going to be looking at timber and ore. You've probably heard of flax as the go-to recipe for power leveling, but what if I told you timber and ore are even higher XP than flax? To understand why, we have to look at something known as the processing XP bug. I'ma show you this with an example. When processing timber into planks, we get 200 XP on each craft. On top of that, there's also a 5% chance to get plywood as a direct proc. If that happens, the game hands out an additional 500 EXP. So most of the time we get 200 EXP and if we're lucky and get that plywood, we get 700 EXP. Now things start to get a little bit unhinged when we're using mass processing, so when we're doing multiple crafts at once in batches. When we're doing a batch craft and even a single craft in the batch prox plywood, the game gets a little bit confused and upgrades all crafts in the batch to 700 EXP, even those that didn't proc plywood. And yes, it's possible that not even a single craft in the batch procs plywood, but that's very unlikely and it gets increasingly more unlikely the higher your mastery. And it's not even limited to timber, this applies to all recipes with a secondary proc, so including timber but also ores, hides and gemstones. So if you see a double notation like this on Videolytics, you can essentially read this as 200 plus 500 EXP. And shout out to this Garoshi guy for bringing this to light. Now, small disclaimer, technically this is a bug and could be patched out in the future, but even after submitting tickets, the devs have left it untouched for almost four years now. So at this point, it's basically a feature of processing. So there you go, and that's the open secret to finding the high EXP stuff in processing. This interaction is what makes timber and ore and a bunch of other materials so great for power leveling. A small thing though, all of these materials are the same EXP on paper, but there are gonna be differences in the processing time. For example, a mass craft of timber takes 60 seconds, while a mass craft of ore takes 90 seconds. So timber would be more effective EXP per hour. But even then, I think they're both amazing materials for power leveling your processing and profiting at the same time. Just by processing all of the materials I had in my storage, I leveled from Guru 20 to Guru 32. And in the process, I took the storage from about 11 bill in market value to 15 bill. So I also made a bit of money on the side. So final thoughts on this method, I would say in the current state of the game, this is probably the closest you can get to what pickled vegetables is to cooking. It's high EXP, the materials are easy to get, and it has a solid exit strategy. Now there is one downside to this method, and that's the weight. Timber and ore are some of the heaviest recipes you can find in processing, so AFK times are gonna be super limited. And a quick thing I want to show you, you can actually look up how much AFK time you get out of the recipe on Videolytics. For that you want to go to the detailed recipe view and then head over to the weight tab and here Videolytics automatically calculates how long you can go AFK for. So you can see for me that's 14 minutes, that is based on the weight I entered in the settings and also my ferry skill. And very important, it also takes into account whether you have the processing costume. If you have it, you want to toggle this button. And you can see here having the maid costume increases my AFK time by around 4 times on this recipe. So I will say if you're processing ores and especially timber, then having the maid costume is a huge quality of life upgrade. And especially if you have low weight and don't have the maid costume, this method is not gonna be much fun, I can tell you that much. But if you don't have it, it's not the end of the world. There are other recipes out there that are more lightweight and we're gonna be talking about those methods later on in the video. But first I want to talk about another method, the ship repair material method. This method used to be the prime way to level processing not too long ago. So let me show you how it works. It's pretty simple actually. You can take any cheap timber, chop that into planks, 
into plywood and then chop it once more to get the chip repair material. And what's so amazing about this is the EXP. You can see here that's 1k EXP. And I can tell you getting 1k EXP and a recipe that is this spammable is quite unique. And the other thing is it vendors for a decent chunk of money. So what people used to do is they would buy cheap timber, chop that into chip repair material and then vendor that. And there's this magic number associated with this method, 540 silver. If you're able to buy timber below this price, you break even on the costs. And as you can imagine, having a high EXP recipe that breaks even on the costs and sells to a vendor is pretty appealing. Now, this used to be a thing, it's not a thing anymore really. That's because the market has changed. Timbers have gotten more expensive. So you can see here, if we sort the timber market by price, even the cheapest timber is way more expensive than this 540 silver threshold. Breaking even is basically not an option anymore. So I will say, this can be an option if you absolutely love the idea of being able to vendor what you process, but with the current prices, I'm just gonna completely skip this method. But I did want to include it in a guide just in case the timber prices go back down in the future and this method becomes viable again. Alright, now I did say we were gonna talk about a few more lightweight recipes, so here we are. Let's talk about the fabrics. Fabric is solid EXP. You can see here, if we're processing flux, we get 500 EXP on the thread and 1k on the fabric. Now, as you can also see, there's no double notation, so that means there is no secondary proc and no EXP bug, so the 500 and the 1k is all we're getting. This averages out to 600 EXP if we consider that we need to do four thread crafts into one fabric craft. By the way, you don't need to calculate that yourself, you can simply look it up on the EXP calculator here, so if you select a recipe, it will show the average. EXP. Also, this is another 60 seconds recipe, so in EXP per hour, this is roughly comparable to timber. And the big difference is that it's way lighter than timber. So if you go into the weight tab over here, you can see with my weight, I'm able to process this for about an hour and a half, right? So this is good EXP, AFK friendly, and you can see there's about a million sold each day, so you'll have no problem getting your hands on this. There's only a slight problem, that is with the exit strategy. Getting rid of large amounts of flex fabric is basically impossible, which means we're crafting at a loss, and that doesn't have to be a bad thing, right? Just crafting something at a loss can be a totally valid strategy to level your processing. So naturally, I was curious just how much money I'm losing if I'm processing flax. And you can check that using Videolytics. So here in the recipe view, we can just zero out the price for the flax fabric. By the way, if you don't have any hopes that this ever becomes useful, you could also just go ahead and vendor this. So in this case, you would enter the vendor price. With my current mastery, I'm paying about 100 million an hour to level with flax. But I will say flax is hella expensive right now just because there's an XP event going on and everybody is trying to level their processing. So pro tip, what I would do is I would buy flax if it's cheap. You can see here there's phases where you can get this for under 600 silver and then stockpile it, wait for an EXP event, and then process it all down. And you can see here, if you're using more reasonable prices, the loss really isn't all that bad. So if you're down to play the long game, this can be a really solid strategy. Alright, that was the fabrics method, and for the next one, we're gonna be staying lightweight with height processing. This one's for the hunters. I'm not a hunter, by the way. I turned off my UI for the cinematics and lost the born history. Yeah? But yeah, no matter what you're hunting, shadow wolves, rhinos, pigs, you're gonna end up with a ton of hides. And depending on just how broken hunting is at that time, these hides can be hella oversupplied on the market. If the market for your hides looks anything like this, you might as well consider getting some use out of them by turning them into processing EXP. Because hides are actually quite good EXP, as we saw earlier in the video. They benefit from the processing EXP bug. So you can see here they have the same EXP as timber and ore, 200 slash 500 EXP for the tier 2 and 500 for the tier 3. And that with a processing time of 90 seconds for tier 2 and for some reason 80 seconds for tier 3. And one of the best thing about hides is that they are just as light as flags. 
And a quick thing I want to mention in case you didn't know, the hides go into different kinds of recipes. So for example, pig hide goes into tough hide and wolf hide goes into thick fur. And you can just look that up in the crafting notes. Now as you can imagine, taking an item that is flooded on the market and processing it will not magically turn it into a useful item. I mean there are some uses for it, tier 2 hides are used in bartering and tier 3 in armor workshops, but just keep in mind that if you're processing a ton of hides, you can basically consider this another dead end. So I'm putting this method out there for people who want to level their processing and sit on a ton of hides without a good way to get rid of them. Alright, and that covers the main methods I wanted to talk about, but there are also a few like smaller methods that I just want to mention for the sake of completeness. First of all, here's a method that used to be really good, but it's kind of bad now, so I feel comfortable talking about it. Once upon a time, these rubies used to sit on the market at min price, and some smart people figured out that rubies are really high XP. You can see here they're 500 slash 1k, Double notation, EXP bug, in total they are 1.5k EXP per craft, which is freaking massive, right? So basically, whoever found out about this just bought up all the rubies, processed them down for massive EXP, and now the market looks like this. And the reason why I'm telling you about this is just so that you're aware that these kind of niche market or like XP hack method exists. And if you do your own markets research and you're lucky, you may just stumble upon one of these methods that not many other people have found out yet and you get your easy XP hack. And then for the last bit, let's just go ahead and sort this recipe table by EXP. You can see there's gonna be a bunch of recipes at 1k, 1.5k or even 2k EXP, excluding the ultimate reform stones because those are a total meme. And without going too much into detail here, because that's where we're getting into the really low volume markets that are really easy to crash. If you do your own research on that, you may be able to find some recipes that are high XP and maybe even high profit at the same time, but it's going to be up to you to research how to get the materials for those recipes. In any case, I hope I could give you some inspiration for recipes for power leveling, and as you can see, there's a bunch of different recipes you can do, all with their pros and cons, and I would just mix and match them based on what your priorities are in the game. And I'll see you in a future video, take care!